<laughs> so you are doing a workshop in March, Donna. I am so excited about it. And of course, I, I think it's hard to say where these things begin, but I remember a conversation we had in Seattle where you were teaching some of the same kind of offering that you'll be making in March. Of course, these things are never the same. Um, and I just said to you, it'd be really lovely to have this in the Washington DC area. So um, the workshop is called Deepening Connections, Exploring the Felt Sense Through the Feldenkrais Method and Whole Body Focusing. So do you wanna tell people what's behind that title a little bit? What's behind that? Thank you. I like that because <clears throat> these are forms that we describe as forms, but actually both the Feldenkrais work and whole body focusing are, you know, they say kind of how, you know, if you're looking at the moon and I'm pointing towards the moon, don't look at my finger, look at the moon. <laughs> and I feel like both of these practices of Feldenkrais and whole body focusing have that quality. In a sense, they're both wisdom paths. They're healing paths, they're wisdom paths. And, and so to talk about the forms is just a way in to something that's really about how each of us have an internal life that can be cultivated and connected within and connected to others. And so that's a very big topic. And there yeah. are many, many disciplines and practices for thousands and thousands and, of years. And your beginnings go back further than your experience with Feldenkrais and whole body focusing. They begin oh, with dance yes. and many other things. Dance, sculpture, child development, meditation from 50 years, uh, Laban movement analysis. I just, I was always a quester in a time when the whole somatic field was not what it is now. We understand so much more now than we did 50 years ago when I was uh, searching for my own sense of self. And I knew somehow, even though it was not understood back then by most of us in the West, that my body was the doorway my awareness through my bodily experience was a doorway to knowing more about me and knowing more about how I connected with the world and with others. So I just went on a journey when I followed my nose and it took me through child development and learning about play and curiosity and the essential nature of children's way of developing. And which I know you have two very Christ creative Dr. daughters. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, I jumped in, I, but you have two very creative daughters. Oh, indeed, indeed, <laughs> yes. So creativity and self-awareness and the making of art ultimately, um, was a path for me and became even more so for my daughters in terms of the creative arts. Mm -hmm. So all of that took me through uh, dance, sculpture, child study, uh, Laban work, which was a tremendous introduction to the scope of the possibility of movement and its expressiveness uh, and what that conveys what the experience of that and what that conveys uh, in terms of communication. Um, and I've been lucky enough to work with the founders of most of these paths. Right, so you studied with Moshe Feldenkrais who created the method named I, after I him, studied of with course, Moshe and Kevin McEvenue. And Kevin McEvenue with whole body focusing and way back in the Laban days with Ermgard Bartinyev mm -hmm. and in my meditation with Swami Muktananda when he first brought the work to the West. So, so uh, yes, so I just kept taking deep dives with these people who were very alive. Mm. And that's what I think has always drawn me in this is where's the aliveness? 
where's the sense of vitality and uh, life force that is essentially how we learn and grow and uh, develop and heal if we have issues to heal. So connecting with that life force through our sensory awareness, through our investigation, through our curiosity, it has been the path that I've followed through all these different forms. So let me ask you, and I feel like you've already hinted at the answer to this question, but who's this workshop for? Who is this workshop for? Well, in, on one level, it's for anyone who has done any work, any internal work, and is curious about their own self-development, and is curious about how to communicate with others from a, a sense of uh, staying true to oneself rather than being clever or skillful about how to communicate, of which there's a great deal written these days. So on one level, it's essential. And anyone who has any practice in any of these ways of investigating, whether it's meditation, whether it's movement awareness, whether it's psychotherapy, uh, whether it's creative arts, all of those practices require going inside and having some experience with oneself that will be a journey mm -hmm. and that through that new, new responses will emerge. So can we take the example of someone who has a meditation practice and what, what might they discover in this workshop that might inform their meditation practice? Well, you know, there are many, many forms of meditation and some of them are more directly connected to paying attention to an embodied experience. Some of them take us away from an embodied experience. Um, there, so there are many ways to frame meditation. For me, um, this, whether we're doing Feldenkrais in a deep way, whether we're doing whole body focusing and entering into what we call grounded presence, we're, we're entering into our deeply felt sense, which is not known before we experience it in the moment. And so how to do that in a way that feels safe, how to do that in a way where we can stay with it and ride with it and learn from it, uh, to me, has a lot to do with my own 50 years of meditation experience. It's always coming back to the body. Um, many practices teach coming back to the breath. Through Feldenkrais work, we have so many ways of exploring possibilities of the breath that we habitually may not experience. So as that opens, and we will in this workshop work with the breath in that way towards the internal spaces, towards the internal experiences, um, new possibility for cultivating our meditation practice uh, naturally emerge as we become more open, as we have more access to more freedom in ourselves, the meditation experience develops. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So um, just thinking back in my own experience of meeting you, I had been practicing the Feldenkrais method for about two years and you gave a presentation at the conference. And of course, Feldenkrais practitioners um, do many things, but one of the things they do is work with touch. So of course, there's plenty in the training that has to do with understanding the nature of the human skeleton. Um, of course, Feldenkrais having been a physicist and looking at that question of how does this structure function in gravity, but then there's all this whole side of, it's not just a, a bag of bones, there's a nervous system, there's a, there's a soul in there. Yes. And um, what I remember in your workshop was, practically just throwing out all of the uh, all of all of these specifics and we just 
made contact with another person and you talked us through the experience of being in contact with another, um, which I thought was incredibly profound and I'm sure far beyond, you know, just what a Feldenkrais practitioner would, would get from the experience. Um, because you do teach the Feldenkrais method and many people know you around that work. Um, and then I'm not sure, but there are probably people who know you predominantly from whole body focusing, which I think are, of all the practices you have, maybe your two current predominant main practices. But maybe you could just touch a little bit on the two, um, also understanding that some people are coming to this workshop with some familiarity with one of the two, but not, not with this sort of intersection or of these experiences. If you could talk a little about Feldenkrais and about whole body focusing in the context of the workshop. Yes, and to go back to what you were saying about making connection and contact and <clears throat> how the details fell away at that moment, I think both practices have that inherent capacity. I think sometimes Feldenkrais work is taught as movement improvement, and Feldenkrais had a far deeper view of what this work is about. And for me, um, the whole body focusing work brought that depth more into aliveness, in, into my own practice and sharing it with others. So I would say in Feldenkrais work, there's a structure usually, if we're talking about the movement work, the awareness through movement work, there is a structure where we're experimenting with um, forms of lessons that are ingenious in terms of how they connect in our nervous system and how new possibilities for ease, for movement, for self-connection, for health, for vitality, all um, naturally begin to emerge out of the incredibly brilliant structures of these lessons and how we do those lessons. So the how we do those lessons requires what I would say is a wisdom path or a series of principles that are wisdom path principles. Slowing down, feeling safe enough to be open to new experience going gently so as to notice much more subtle responses in oneself than we do in an everyday way. Um, the sense of ease and smoothness where we're not skipping over those bumps in our movement investigations because the bumps are where the difficulties are. And we tend to in larger movement or uh, in quicker movement, just skip those bumps. We don't even notice it. Like that happens with our vision all the time. Um, we see what we see, but we don't notice until we slow down that actually our eyes jump. And it, where they jump, we're not seeing. Mm -hmm. And so that's true in general. We're not perceiving, we're not seeing, we're not experiencing those parts that we jump over. So slowing down, listening, embracing, being open to the unknown and learning to be more comfortable in that uh, experience so that new information arises, I think is true in both the Feldenkrais work and in whole body focusing. So in the Feldenkrais work and awareness through movement and somewhat in functional integration, there are structures that Functional integration being the hands-on work. The hands-on work, the awareness through movement being the, the self-exploration through these movement processes. The verbally guided lessons. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, those structures create a frame in which to explore. How we explore is where the, the juice is in terms of how it affects each of us individually. And no two people have the same experience with a lesson because we are going deeper. And in whole body focusing, um, a lot of these principles are very, very similar. That's why they're so near and dear to me and why I think uh, 
there is this intersection that's really important. Um, in whole body focusing, we begin by attuning ourselves to what we call grounded presence. And in grounded presence, the, of course, talking about an experience, this is like pointing to the moon that I was talking about <laughs> before. And in the workshop, we'll have lots of experiences with going into that experience. When we're in that experience, which we enter through attuning ourselves through our felt sense to our internal experience and also to our connection, our felt connections with the environment, with the ground, with the space around us, with the air, with the sounds around us. As we enter into that more and more deeply in a felt sense way, not a thinking way and not a intentionally emptying out way or many other techniques that are used in lots of paths, but as we enter into that, we actually begin to experience ourselves in a kind of a presence that doesn't really have to do much with emotion or thinking or conflict. We, and, and here's where I think it is related to meditation also, right? We're really entering into a sense of our whole self present relatively free from all of those human pulls and pushes and inside outside struggles that we have as human beings. And from there, from that place in the whole body focusing experience, um, experiences or questions will arise that are not about that state, right? Something that wants attention something feels gretchy, something feels uncomfortable, something wants my attention. And what we learn to do is make room for that spontaneous arising of what wants attention. And we hold it in this larger experience of grounded presence. Rather than maybe resisting if, it, if it's something I don't want to feel right now. I don't want to feel this, or that's not important, or I'm going to put my attention somewhere else, right? No, we stay with it. And we don't really well, That's know. my thinking mind, and my thinking mind is supposed to be quiet right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But there's something here that does want attention, and it may not have language to it at all. It may, it may be very fuzzy. In fact, it usually is to begin with. And as it arises in the safety of this larger field of grounded presence that we cultivate, there's room for somehow those two ways of perceiving, those two ways of giving attention vibrate with each other in some way where there's a natural movement forward. Mm -hmm. 